Have you ever heard someone says that Israel is an apartheid state like South Africa? It's a comparison that gets thrown around a lot. But what does it really mean? Let's break it down. Apartheid was a policy in South Africa that lasted from 1948 to the early 1990s. The government made laws that kept people of different races apart. Think about it like this. Imagine being told you can sit on certain benches, go to certain schools, or even live in certain neighborhoods just because of the color of your skin. That's how it was during apartheid. People were separated in almost every part of their lives. Black South Africans couldn't vote and had few rights compared to the white South Africans. But is Israel doing the same thing today? As some people say, it's a big question. And to find the answer, we need to dig deep. Let's explore these comparisons and see what we find. We will look at the history, the laws, and the lives of people in both places. It's a big, complicated story. And you might be surprised by what we discover together. So, are you ready to go on this journey of discovery? Let's start exploring. Let's start with a brief history. Israel, established in 1948, was born out of the Jewish people's need for a homeland. But it's not just a Jewish state. In Israel, everyone, whether they are Jewish, Arab, Christian, Druze, Bedouin, or others, is treated equally. Equal rights and equality aren't just a slogan. They are a reality. And I'm not saying Israel is perfect. Not at all. As always, you know I'm talking facts, evidence, events, dates, specific people's names, and more. If you think I'm wrong, you can tell me in the comments. But remember to use real facts, not just guesses. So today we're diving deep into the heart of this vibrant democracy to dispel myth and reveal the truth about Israel's diverse and inclusive society. So let's uncover the stories that mainstream narrative often overlook and shed the light on the coexistence and achievements of Arab citizens in the Jewish state. In Israel, Arab and Jewish leaders work together in the government. Arab judges make decisions in courts and Arab doctors work with Jewish doctors. So saying apartheid just doesn't make sense. And we're not just discussing coexistence here, but about active participation and representation in every aspect of Israeli life. This is Israel, where Arabic is an official language, where the streets echo with melodies of both Hebrew and Arabic, and where Jewish and Arab children grow up in a society that teaches them about diversity and respect. By the way, we'll have a tour of Jerusalem coexistence later in the video, so stay tuned. Fact number one, Arab representation in politics. In Israel governments, there are many Arab leaders like Aida Thomas Suleiman, who leads a team for equality, and Mansour Abbas, who made a big difference in Israel governments. These aren't just names. They're Arab Israeli reshaping our nation. They debate, legislate, and represent. Not quite apartheid, right? One notable figure in Israeli politics proving Israel is not an apartheid is Mansour Abbas a Sunni Muslim who is a member of the Ram Bala joint list and has served in the 21st, 22nd, 23rd, 24th, and the 25th Knesset. His participation in the governing coalition broke a long-standing taboo from the Arab party side. Another influential Arab politician is Ahmad Tibi, a member of the Ta'al party and the Arab joint list. Tibi, a long-standing member since 1999, representing the Arab movement for renewal and an active voice from the joint list. These are more than just names. They are faces of active, influential Arab Israelis shaping the nation's future. These Arab members of Israel's government lead important groups and help make laws showing that Israel is not an apartheid system. Don't forget to click subscribe and the bell icon so you won't miss any exciting stories and true facts. Oh, and by subscribing, you will join me in spreading the truth. Fact number two, Arabs in the Israeli legal system. Let's talk about two important judges in Israel's highest court the Supreme Court. These judges show how people from different backgrounds can reach high position in Israel. First up is Judge Khaled Kaboub. He made history in 2022 by becoming the first Muslim to be a permanent judge in Israel's Supreme Court. Judge Kaboub, who grew up in Jaffa in a Muslim family, worked hard and became well known for being fair and wise in making decisions about the law. 
Before Judge Kaboob, there was another Muslim judge named Abdel Rahman Zuabi. He was also in the Supreme Court, but just for a short time in 1999. His time as a judge was vital because it opened doors for more diversity. We also have Justice George Kara, an Arab Christian who became part of this important court in 2017. He grew up in Jaffa too and worked as a lawyer before becoming a judge. He's known for handling significant cases, even ones involving the most influential people in Israel. Oh, before I forget, I will also cover the groundbreaking Abraham Accords, an important historical event. So wait for it. Having Judge Kaboob and Justice Kara in the Supreme Court is really special. It shows that you can reach high and important roles in Israel, no matter where you come from or your background. It's like a big message saying everyone is welcome to be part of the team, making important decision for the entire country. Fact number three, Arabic language and culture. In Israel, Arabic isn't just spoken. It holds the status of an official language. This means people use it a lot when they talk every day, and you can see it in signs, government papers, and in schools. Making Arabic an official language shows that Israel cares about the language and culture of its Arab people. Events showcasing Arab literature and music are held daily, reflecting the nation mosaic of cultural diversity. Arab Israeli contribute significantly to the country's culture landscape, ensuring their traditions and artistic expression are preserved and cherished. Oh, and did you know there are few Jewish Muslim celebrity couples in Israel, such as Lucy Arish and Tzachi Alevi? Lucy, a Muslim Arab news anchor, and Sahi, a Jewish actor and singer known for his Fauda role, represent a beautiful example of interfaith marriage in Israel. Their union, celebrated widely in the media, breaks down stereotypes and showcases the natural, everyday coexistence that often goes unnoticed. Fact number four, Vivian Silver's tragic story. So you still think Israel is an apartheid state? Let's debunk that myth with the life of Vivian Silver, an extraordinary figure bridging cultures. In the kibbutz near Gaza, Silver didn't just live. She thrived, forming deep connection with Bedouins and Gazans. She co-founded the Arab Jewish Center for Equality, Empowerment, and Cooperation, fostering Israeli-Palestinian business partnerships before 2007 Gaza border closure. Her commitment didn't waver, even serving on the board of B'Tselem, a human rights organization that many Israelis don't agree with. Silver's work after retirement is awe-inspiring. She co-founded Women Wage Peace and drove Palestinian from Gaza to Israel hospitals reflecting her undenying commitment to Jewish Arab partnership and peace. These actions shattered the apartheid narrative. Unfortunately, the Canadian-Israeli peace activist was murdered during the October 7, 2023 Hamas-led attack on Israel, embodies a story rarely told. <laughs> Fact number five, geography and demography of Arab towns in Israel. Travel to Nazareth, Umm al-Fahim, Umrat. Travel to the beautiful market in Druze town, Dalit and Carmel. These are busy cities in Israel where most people are Arab, and they have Arab mayors and Arab city councils. They are an important part of Israel and are not kept separated. Nazareth, known as the Arab capital of Israel, is a prime example of this integration, with a population of over 77,000 in 2021. It serves as a cultural, political, religious, economic, and commercial center for Arab citizens of Israel. This city city is historically significant, being the childhood home of Jesus and a key site during the Crusades. Its residents are predominantly Arab citizens of Israel, with 69% being Muslim and 30.9% Christian. The city's development from a Jewish village in Roman and Byzantine times to a significant town in the 18th century under Zahir al-Umar illustrate its long-standing multicultural heritage.
Um al Fahim, an Arab Muslim city with a population of 57,000 in 2021, stands as a social, cultural, and economic center in the Haifa district. Dalit al Carmel, a Druze town on Mount Carmel in the Haifa district of Israel, symbolizes cultural richness and coexistence. In 2021, its population was over 18,000 people, predominantly Druze, with Muslim and Christian minorities. Fact number six, the coexistence in the Israeli healthcare system. Walk into any Israeli hospital, you'll see Jewish and Arab doctors working side by side, treating patients of all backgrounds. Is it an apartheid state? I don't think so. The coexistence in Israeli healthcare is not just anecdotal. It's supported by facts and real life stories. At the Sharet Tzedek Medical Center in Jerusalem, about 20-25% of the 5,000 employees are Arab, mirroring the rate of Arab patients. The Galil Medical Faculty in Sfat, part of Bar Ilan University, and the Bnei Tzion Medical Center in Haifa are other examples of Jewish and Arab medical staff working harmoniously. The Galil Medical Faculty created a video featuring diverse doctors and nurses to promote coexistence. At the same time, Bnei Tzion organized a meal for its staff to celebrate and call for patience and tolerance during challenging times. Professor Salman Zarka is an Israeli physician and the current director of Ziv Medical Center in Sfat. Born in 1964 in Pekin, Israel, to a large Druze family, he began his studies at the School of Medicine in the Technion Haifa as part of the academic reserve military program. Zarka has a master's degree in epidemiology and public health from the Hebrew University Brown School of Public Health and Community Medicine. He served in the Israeli Defense Force for over 25 years, during which he founded and commanded the operation of a field hospital on the Israel-Syria border for the treatment of wounded victims of the Syrian civil war. As of July 2021, he has been serving as the Israel COVID project manager for the entire Israel. Fact number seven, leading Muslim players in Israeli sport. Sports, anyone? Think about Biram Kial, an Arab-Israeli midfielder who is not just a soccer player, he's a symbol of unity. Born in 1988 in Jedida Marker, Kayal started with Maccabi Haifa, a top Israeli club. By 2010, he made European waves, joining Celtic FC in Scotland. Here's a player for an Arab village playing for Israeli and European teams, cheered by fans across ethnic lines. Bibras Natho, a remarkable figure in Israeli sports, is a Circassian and Muslim captain of the Israel national football team. This achievement speaks volumes about the opportunities and respect available to individuals of various backgrounds in Israeli sports. Can you name a Jewish player on a national Arab team? But it's not just about individual success. Events like the Israeli League or the Toto Club, a domestic Israel soccer competition, see Arab and Jewish players competing side by side. Notable moment. Take the 2016-2017 season, Bnei Sakhnin, an Arab-Israeli club, reaching the semi-finals. Or Apoel Ironi Kiryat Shmona, with its diverse lineup, winning the cup. The message here is clear. In Israeli sport, mainly soccer, the field is a place of unity. Fans cheering for Kayal or Natho aren't divided by ethnic lines. They are united by talent and teamwork. Does this resemble a society bent on segregation? Far from it. It's a portrait of diversity and shared passion, a microcosm of existence far removed from the acquisition of apartheid. Fact number eight, Israeli economic coexistence. So you say economic apartheid? Let's check the facts. Arab citizens in Israel aren't just part of the workforce. They are leaders and innovators shaping the nation's economy. In the tech sector, consider Sami Saadi, co-founder of Tsofen, an organization established in 2008 that promotes the integration of Arab citizens into Israel's high-tech industry. Saadi's work has been pivotal in opening doors for Arab professionals in tech, a field often viewed as the backbone of Israel's economy. In academia, Hossam Haik, an esteemed scientist and professor, has made significant contribution to nanotechnology and non-invasive disease 
today's diagnosis, hike in Arab Israeli is a testament to the diversity and inclusivity within Israel Academy and scientific communities, particularly in the Technion Israel Institute of Technology, which exemplify the opportunities available to Arab Israeli in the nation's higher education and research sector. And yes, there are many, many more successful Arabs in Israel. Don't believe me? Google it or try to prove me wrong in the comment, but add evidence. Fact number nine, freedom of religion and worship in Israel. Let's walk through Jerusalem together and you will witness this harmony. Mosques, churches, synagogues, they don't just coexist. They are integral to the city's identity. One of the most iconic symbols of this religious coexistence is the old city of Jerusalem. Here the Western Wall, the Church of the Holy Sepulchre and the Al-Aqsa Mosque stand within meters of each other. Each of these sites, significant to Judaism, Christianity and Islam, respectively, is protected under Israeli law, ensuring freedom of worship for all. Consider the events of Ramadan each year. Tens of thousands of Muslim worshippers gather at the Al-Aqsa Mosque, the third holiest site in Islam. The Israeli government facilitates this gathering, providing extra security and ensuring safe passage for all worshippers, a direct contradiction to any claims of religion separation. Christianity too received respect and recognition. Annual events like the Christmas procession in Bethlehem and Easter celebration in Jerusalem draw thousands of pilgrims from around the world. The Israeli government works closely with Christian leaders to ensure these events are conducted smoothly and safely. Moreover, Israel's legal system reinforced this religious diversity. The Basic Law, Human Dignity and Liberty, enacted in 1922, explicitly protects freedom of religion. This legal framework has led to a landmark decision like the 2011 ruling by the Israeli Supreme Court, which unheld the right of women to pray at the Western Wall, a traditionally male-dominated site. Fact number 10. The Abraham Accord, signed in 2020, the Abraham Accord signify a new normalization era between Israel and Arab states, including the United Arab Emirates, Bahrain, Sudan, and Morocco. These accords, brokered by the United States, symbolized a shifting paradigm in the Middle East, with Arab nations acknowledging Israel's sovereignty and establishing diplomatic, economic, and cultural ties. For instance, the first commercial flight from Israel to the UAE on August 31, 2020, marked an historic moment symbolizing the new relationship being forged. These agreements are not just diplomatic formalities. They have led to actual results, such as economic cooperation, direct flights, tourism, and cultural exchange programs. For example, the Israeli and Moroccan governments have actively promoted bilateral trade and tourism, resulting in direct flights and a surge in cultural and educational exchanges. Israel's consistent efforts to forge peace and normalize relations with Muslim neighbors starkly contrast with the characteristics of an apartheid state. Instead, they demonstrate a commitment to coexistence, mutual respect, and regional stability essential to pursuing lasting peace. To learn more about Israel's history and coexistence, check the video on the screen now.